This might be a, a video I've done before, like so much so that I think I might even have made the same points. I don't know. Here we go. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So, I get this question a lot. <laughs> the question is, if God is good, then why do I need to pray? Because if what I'm praying for is good, then he already wants to give it to me, right? So, or give it to whoever else I'm praying for. So, if God is good, why should we pray? If God knows everything, why should we pray? Basically, what, what good does prayer do? Now, a lot of times, <laughs> the answer I got growing up, was was good answer, it's, but it's only the first part of a multi-parted, multi-parted, multi-faceted answer. The first part was, well, prayer doesn't change God, it changes you, which makes sense because God doesn't change, right? God doesn't change his mind. Like he was going to do one thing, but you were like, I'm going to convince you, God, you're going to do something differently. No, he, God, again, he already knows he doesn't change. So if God is, doesn't change, then uh, why pray? Because are you trying to change his mind? Well, A, no, you're not trying to change his mind. Something else is happening. That's over on the side. We're going to get to that. So the, so then the, uh, so B, I guess would be in that case, prayer changes you. Not a bad answer. In fact, it does. <laughs> prayer does change us. And that's one of the great gifts of prayer is that we come to God with our needs, whether it's for ourselves or for someone else. We come to God with our longing, with the thing like, God, I want this thing. I want this will to be done. I want whatever. And then what happens a lot of times is if God says yes, great. If he says no, I need to learn to accept that no. And if God says, wait, then I need to learn to wait. And so that, that coming back to the Lord, um, it changes me. It teaches me how to trust. It teaches me how to hope in the midst of a lack of an answer. It teaches me how to receive no as an answer. And one of the things we recognize is it is an incredible sign of uh, Christian maturity to be able to hear the word no from God and to receive it. We know that we're, we're stuck in some, what you might call immaturity as, as disciples of Jesus and as sons and daughters of the father, if he can't tell us no. So one of the things that prayer does is it changes us, but it doesn't, doesn't just change us. Now, again, it doesn't change God, but it does some other things. So what does it do? Well, here's a God who doesn't want to save the world without you. Here's God who wants to will good and bring good to the world, but he doesn't want to do it without us. And it's just bonkers. It's crazy, right, to imagine this, that actually a God waits for us to cooperate with him. And we know this. For example, C.S. Lewis writes about this. He says, of course, uh, prayer changes things. And of course, we know this, right? Because if we really truly believed that, well, God's will is always done regardless of what I do, then um, we would never do anything. He would say, uh, well, then we'd say things like, well, if God wants me to eat today, he'll bring food to my door. Or um, we'd go outside without an umbrella because, well, if God doesn't want me to get wet by the rain, then he'll make it rain around me. That kind of a thing, right? No, he says, we go out and get food for ourselves because we know God wants us to eat today. I have to go get my food. Oh, we wear an, wear an umbrella. I don't know who does that. We carry an umbrella because we're saying, yeah, I don't think God wants me to get wet today. Therefore, I will carry an umbrella. So in that, we are cooperating with what we, with what we believe to be the will of God. Something similar is true for prayer. Why do we pray? Because we believe that in, to some degree, our prayer is cooperating with what God wants. It's, it's kind of like if you're a parent, you've been in this situation a thousand times where you have chores to do around the house and you could do them and you could do them better than your children. You could do them faster than your children and you could spare yourself a lot of headaches if you just did them instead of your children doing them. But you have this project and you say, I want my kids to learn how to sweep the floor. I want them to learn how to build a shed. I remember this is the example I always come back to is remember building this shed in the backyard of my parents' house. <laughs> my dad could have built this shed so quickly. He could have built this shed by himself, um, but he wanted to have his six helpers <laughs> with him and it made it so much more difficult, but he didn't want to accomplish this task without us. He wanted the task done. Yeah, that was his will. His will was to accomplish, accomplish the task, build a shed but he wanted us to work with him. Sim something similar is true when it comes to our intercessory prayer. When we pray to God and ask him for something good, what we're doing is we're learning, not only learning how to trust, learning how to be patient, learning how to hear no, learning how to hear wait, learning how to hear yes, but we're also learning how to be co-workers with God. Another element is while we pray, we're becoming more 
familiar with God. We're becoming more intimate with God, closer to him. So he waits, us, waits for us to pray, not because he wants to be convinced of anything, but because our coming back again and again to him changes us and changes our relationship with him. So I, I think about that time. I have, it's one shed, one shed I built, well, I built, <laughs> that my dad and I and my siblings built in the backyard. Whenever I see that shed, I'm reminded of the time I spent with my dad and my siblings building this shed and realizing like, that did something to our relationship. That working together, him trusting us and teaching us, um, also revealed to us what our dad is like. And when we come back to the Lord in our prayer, we come back to the Lord in that kind of petitionary prayer, it teaches us what our father is like when we get closer to him. So these are some, some of the reasons why God not only waits for us to pray, but he wants us to pray. Yes, it changes us. It teaches us something, makes us a new kind of person. But also, we become co-workers with him. We cooperate with him. And we get to know the Father's heart. So, prayer does change things. It changes us. It does change the world. It just doesn't change God. Anyway, from all of us here to Sense Presents, my name is Father Mike, and I am very shiny and pale, and the sun is bright outside. God bless.